Heidi Roo. I'll use all my coolest words. Oh, you know, I've got double audio. Hang on a second. There we go. Solve that one. How's everyone doing? Should we do this? Should we go live? Let's bring me in here. We're there. Guys, we're back. We're live on the air. The shop is open for business. I see uh, Chris Ray over in the comments already. He was expecting uh, maybe a theme song that had 12. Like the old, uh, and, and now I can call it the old Reason 11, uh, I guess, theme song. I don't know. It kind of became a, became a stream theme song. It became the kind of the sound of Reason 12. It was originally, you know, when I make, um, I didn't make that music, but when I uh, commissioned that music uh, from Lars Soderbergh uh, for the Reason 11 release, we had no idea that it was going to be used as much as it was. Um, and it was a great song. So, and now everyone got to do the 11, but now we don't have a 12. So I leave that up to you guys. You guys should make a, a 12 uh, song maybe. And I don't know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll use it in a stream. Um, this song, I'm going to, while it fades out, I'm just going to shout out. Josh Mobley made this one. He didn't make this for Reason 12 or anything. It's fading out already. Um, but he uh, he made this. He's got a sound pack in Reason Plus. Uh, he's got a sound pack called Grain... Something Grain 002? Oh, shoot. Now I, I can't remember what it's called. Grain 002, maybe. Or New Grain 002. It's something like that. It's a good sound pack. It's a great demo. And uh, I used that in the mimic video as just a music bed i just laid it under and i was reminded that josh makes the most fantastic as a i'm going to speak to you guys off totally off uh, topic for a second as just a post-production sound mixers uh whenever you lay music underneath dialogue it's the wrong type of music can really make it tough to mix and so for example and to say nothing against this genre the genre of trap is really hard to sit underneath dialogue because snares are way louder than everything else in the mix. And so you end up, and they're always these really bright things. And so you always end up having to sit that much quieter than you would, you know, I don't know, a, a rock track or something like that. But Josh manages to make these tracks in all genres that for whatever reason, I can sit them under dialogue so well. And he's just so, so good at it. Some, sometime, Josh, um, we're going to we're gonna have to chat about how you do that. Maybe get some tips for people because your, your mixes are just so good. Anyway, that's not why we're here to talk. We're here to talk about Mimic. Mimic Creative Sampler, it is out now already in Reason Plus. It's coming in September in the the fully packaged Reason 12 of release uh, for those of you who are not Reason Plus subscribers. And um, we, we want to kind of check it out. I made a tutorial video and I showed people I like a getting started. I mean, we went, I wouldn't say we went deep but we didn't scratch the surface either. We, we found that kind of Goldilocks medium of just, you know, looking at some of the cool things you could do, hopefully inspiring you. I, I meant it when I said I was massively inspired by Mimic in my playing around with it and really kind of having to confront my, I don't know what you'd call it, my laziness it almost feels like to have not been using samples as much as I, I now feel like I should and probably will be in the future. You know, I, I oversimplified it in the video. I said, I said, I, you know, I don't use samples in my music making. I mean, I do, but I, I not to the degree that I that I really think I could tap into it. And even today, just like getting things set up with Matthias and hearing stuff he's doing, I just have, you know, the best the best thing that can happen. You probably all will recognize this as well. The best thing that can happen for you as a creative is when you hear someone doing something and you suddenly have this like, oh, wait, wait, let me get in on that. Let me, I gotta, give me that. I, I wanna carry the ball and run with it, you know? Put me in the game, coach. And um, when, when you hear those things, you, that's sort of, I guess you would call that inspiration, you know? But I heard Matthias just setting up, just getting audio working as our tech tests and he's doing little things with these samples. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh wait, oh, I could, I, I hear a track, I got something, I can put something on that. So I've been just massively inspired by, by Mimic and the, the concept of sampling. And I guess that's good timing because we got one coming out. And uh, so we're going to be showing it to you today. And the idea today is that we're going to go uh, even a little deeper. Um, there's, you know, with all Reason devices and Reason instruments and stuff, there's there's no real bottom to the depth. that You can always go deeper with them and do more stuff. So so we're gonna, at some point we're going to just hit our, our point of like that's as deep as we're going. But we're going to go, we're going to go pretty deep. So if you... Uh, saw the tutorial and you want to see some more of these panel things, you're going to see them today. 
So with that in mind, um, let me just check in with the comments real quick. I think everyone was just saying hello. Um, Enoch Light says he misses the Era of Reason demo songs. I think you meant when we used to package them into uh, versions of Reason. And um, yeah, you know, they're they're still out there. And there's I think we still, maybe we still have them on our website. Maybe we don't. I don't know. I haven't checked in with that section. But uh, anyway, uh, Be Mild, let's do this. I agree with you. Be Mild, let's do this. And uh, Vic20, hello, Reason Peeps. I agree. Hello, Reason Peeps. How, I hope everyone out there is doing well, having a good summer, staying safe. I can't believe that we're a year and a half into when I started live streaming kind of on the regular, and I'm still having to tell people, I hope you're staying safe, but I hope you are all staying safe. So um, with anyway, with that in mind, with that uplifting note, let's bring uh, Matthias onto the stream. Matthias, welcome to ooh, the ooh, internet. Ooh. Thank you. Very uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw the chat is already discussing the big questions like pineapple on pizza. So this is going to be a good one. Oh, you know, I saw, by the way, there was a thing on Reddit recently where someone said um, that they said, like, to all of those people who love pineapple on pizza and all those who don't, it's time for us to lay down our weapons and join forces because we have a new enemy. <laughs> and they had a picture of someone that put mango on pizza. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I totally am with that. I'm, I'm definitely on the anti pineapple on pizza uh, team, but uh, I know you are, you are normally my enemy, but now you and I can unite against mango on pizza. We will try to be friends too in the stream. And yes, we can exactly. go back to enemy that, <laughs> like no, state. That's right. The, right now it's a, it's a ceasefire. So um, how are you doing and how are things over in Sweden? I haven't seen you in two, two yeah, years, forever. Matthias. I haven't like, I haven't been able two to poke years. you for two years and when I, you know i was over for the reason 11 uh release work and i was like oh you know i'll should i maybe i'll come over for christmas too and then i'll oh, just now nah, maybe a little bit later and then then the world yep. ended <laughs> yeah no I, i'm pretty good there's lots to do <laughs> as there is before a big release yeah uh, so i have so we're, we're keeping busy I have your title on screen right now as Music Making Super Genius, um, but that isn't not, your official title. It's not quite title. true, not but your I appreciate title. it. I, I thought it was more appropriate for what you're doing today. But uh, for those that mm. don't know, uh, Matthias is the uh, Reason Product Manager. Am I correct in uh, my, my verbiage there? Yeah. Uh, that's correct. Uh, it's kind of, I'm, I'm, uh, we've kind of changed things around a little bit. So I'm the Product Manager for Music Making, if that makes sense. Uh, it just to, like everything we do is reason and it's almost crazy that one person should be managing all of that right so uh, we're kind of making sure that we have everything covered so i'm uh, i'm in charge of doing things that make you do music that sounds like a the right place for you your attention to be focused. i can't complain <laughs> um you know people who may not know your uh, sort of background you you come from a not just a <coughs> tech background, but you're a, a music composer and producer, and um, a, quite a good one at that, I might say. In fact, you know, a lot of the reason songs over the years have come from Matthias. Um, yeah, embarrassingly so. <laughs> no, they're all uh, good. It's actually quite a milestone when we release the date we release Reason 12, September 1st, is also the date I've worked here for 10 years. Really? So it would be double celebration, yeah. Oh, congratulations. We'll have to throw you a little, um, some kind of party or, I don't know, tweet a picture yeah. of a, a gold watch. Not, not give you an actual golden watch, but a, a tweet picture of no, one. that maybe would or be something. silly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, well, cool. Well, so your focus right now, you are solely focused on, on getting Reason 12 ready and out the door. And that means some logistical things, working with the, with the dev team to, to get it ready, um, sort yeah. of finalizing the whole plan and all that. But um, Exactly. How are you? Uh, how are you feeling? You're just what are we? Ten, ten days away? Nine, eleven? Yeah, days away? not many 12. days left. I'm, as always, I'm always super nervous before any big release. But uh, uh, all the stuff we're doing is really exciting, and you know, I've been playing around with all these features for for a long time in various states, and it, it's all coming together now. Uh, and I think uh, Mimic turned out really well, as we'll see. But I also think the uh, upcoming Combinator update is quite a smash hit. So. <laughs> I'm really excited to share more about that uh, at maybe the next stream. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Was, that a, was that a tease? What we call the business? A yeah, tease? Was that a, was that a little bit of a tease? <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone already asked, what's up with the scratch marks? Bar oh, fight. Right. I wish it was a bar fight. I, no, I can't believe a, I forgot. No, it was a cat fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was a cat fight in the literal <laughs> sense of uh, the word. 
Uh, you want to yeah. no, tell my people my tiny about... little cat, my tiny little cat Lloyd, uh, uh, got tangled up in my headphones and panicked. And his uh, immediate reaction was, of course, to scratch at my face, which was close by. So I actually had a couple of meetings yesterday with uh, Niklas, the CEO, and uh, the CTO, while bleeding profusely from my face. <laughs> you know, I uh, I was uh, telling Matthias. Uh, this this is going to be a reference that is only going to work for the U.S. audience and probably the the over thirty five crowd, um, maybe maybe thirty. I don't know. Um, there was when I was a kid, there was these two GI Joe figure toys, these like a uh, soldier GI Joe toys, um, called T to uh, Zaymot and Tomax, I think were their names, and they were twins. And the only way you could tell them apart was one of them had a scar on their cheek. And so I've decided that uh, <laughs> I'm actually talking to evil twin Matthias now. So yep. You might, yeah, you someone might... said you need to wear your mask around the cats, uh, which I actually, there was a reason after this, I, I put the mask on when I went to the store, not because that's required anymore, but because I looked so bad the same day. <laughs> it just looked really horrible, so I didn't want to scare anyone. That's perfect. <laughs> that's like um, in, in the past, uh, there's times where I'll wear headphones out onto the street when I haven't like brushed my hair because like ugh, i just can't right just, right right <laughs> just sort of i'm gonna put that and put it in a mask great you know just just yeah, yeah. suit up with things to cover your your lack of preparation for the outside world um well yeah someone's we... already calling me evil matthias so we're... you'll yeah. have to see if the scar disappears suddenly then you know you're talking to someone else that's right that's right um yeah totally well let's talk about mimic let's I mean, that's talk... why we're here you they might not even like us. They just want to see the stuff. I know. <laughs> let's uh, let's do that. So um, I'm going to bring, should I bring Mimic up? No, let's, well, conceptually, just for a second, let's talk about Mimic, uh, the idea behind it. What brought Mimic to Reason 12 is, you know, you guys have to make mm -hmm. a lot of hard choices whenever you're facing a release as to what are we going to focus our energy on? You often say, you're not short on ideas. You're you right. know, what you, the choices you have to make about time and resources and scope and what is going to help people make the best music the most. And so what mm, was the thinking mm. that went into Mimic? Uh, so Mimic, uh, I mean, it's been talked about for a long time. I think it's one of those things that often come up if you, you know, look at YouTube comments and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of new sampler stuff coming up. Uh, uh, the way we're structured, we have some real experts in making devices. Uh, so, you know... It, it's not always the same thing we're working on. The little device team that's uh, uh, Peter, Andy, and Lud and me, uh, we're working on things in parallel with you know, feature development and stuff. Uh, and a sampler was really high on the list because we have a, someone commented actually, we have a lot of samplers in Reason. And that's completely right, but they're all quite different. And right. One thing we really felt like we were missing was a, a sampler that felt very quick and immediate that gives you that visual feedback to let you really handle the waveform and the, the slices and really kind of work quickly and we also really wanted something that you know it's definitely borrowing from what the, what the great samplers are doing but we wanted something with its own character mm. that felt like it would be something that caused you to almost run across accidents or new ideas or you know come across something you didn't do before because of the way you interact. Right. Uh, and that was really kind of the, the seed for that. Then we went through a, a long phase of testing and building and trying things out and seeing what worked well with our format and what didn't and so on. What I think is interesting um, about the idea that there's um, reason has had multiple samplers is they're all sort of a representation of sampling, a snapshot of what sampling was at the time they were made. So hmm. the Nina 19 came out in the era of sort of the Akai S3000 and that, that sort of era of sampler. And it's very much of that mold. And right. NXT comes out a few years later when sort of the multi-sample and the key mapping and the velocity, you know, crossfades and all that was sort of the, that was the sampling mm -hmm. vanguard at the time. And, uh, and Mimic, you know, comes out in this later era when, when it, there's almost been in some ways a regression in sampling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you, you hear, when you hear sampling used in music, nowadays you hear it used in a almost a cruder way. Uh, of course, you still hear multi sampled piano, right? But this kind of crude sampling, the chopping up, the kind of not quite on beat or interesting little quirks, that's the stuff that's really 
it's trendy in a way, but it's also really exciting. It's, it's fun. It's really fun to do. Like as a music producer, it's one of those things that isn't really tedious. It's more exploratory, which I think is uh, definitely part of why we uh, went the way we did. But, you know. Right, right. There was a couple of questions uh, flying by, and I thought maybe we should just get them out of the way before we dive into yeah, Singapore yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to mimic. <laughs> Um, because they, they will come up, um, and they'll probably be asked multiple times, and maybe we can, we'll probably mention them because someone else will ask them later. Um, but somebody was asking effectively their question. I can't find it now. I'm scrolling up. I don't see it. They had a question. Oh, here it is. Um, they said, are you going to make some minor changes requested by the community to mimic, or is it definitely freezing? And mm. um, that's a, it's a sort of, there's, there's multiple parts to, that, I guess, that answer. But, but particularly one thing I know that that's related to is uh, people have asked about things like, uh, pitch detection in right, samples. right, yeah. I, I think this is uh, it leads to an interesting discussion, but I don't want to get too deep. We're here to talk about a cool sampler and make some music, but uh, we're kind of changing gears a little bit that we want to iterate more uh, on the things we do. That means, you know, previously, like many years in the past, we released something and that is immutable. <laughs> that is the thing it is and, and you right. try not to touch it again. Right. Screen uh, 4 you know, is for, what Screen 4 was when it came out in 2003 right. or something. Right. Yeah. Uh, and as we've moved both into subscriptions, but also just in general, learn more, I, I think we're now of a mind where we will continue to improve things. So Mimic, as an example, we've already added pitch detection, uh, and that will be in the final release of Reason 12. It will work the same as in Grain. Uh, because, yeah, we, we heard you loud and clear, and there was an, an oversight that it wasn't there, really. Uh, and we've also uh, optimized a lot of the uh, time stretch code in Mimic uh, that, that turned out really well. So it, it's actually a lot faster now, especially if you're playing a bit higher octaves. So just, just for in, semantic, in general, when you say, I'd say... When you yeah. say it's a lot faster now, you actually mean it will be a lot faster on release. Um, right. It's, it's, a like, it's a lot faster now on the build the... that's on the Pellis computer. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Right. Uh, but I mean, yes. And this is not, we, we've always tried to iterate and, and be, be agile, you know, but uh, we just want to kind of make it clearer to you that, that of course, we're open to improving things. Right. Always. I think it is, you know, um, having been, I mean, having been a Reason user since 2001, having been a, 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 around about 10 years with you in terms of being with uh, the company, officially speaking, um, I think it, there is a, a big sort of conceptual change going on there where we are we are in an iterative world and yeah. um, I want to sing the Madonna song now and I'm an iterative girl. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> I think actually to, to uh, talk to, I saw some questions about uh, uh, where Mimic's available, is it Reason 12 or is it, why is it in Reason Plus and so on. And I think uh, part of, of what Reason Plus lets us do that we couldn't do before is actually you know, push stuff out more often so in terms of, now, now I'm getting into off, like business stuff, but when we had these big releases, uh, the big releases needed to be at a certain state. They needed to have all the features in there. That feature list needed to be this big, and it needed to be this done for, you know, all the, the great stores out there to actually buy the box and sell the box, right? Right. Uh, and you only had one shot to get that right. So you took two years and you crunched and you put everything in there until the package looked good enough and then you shipped the package. Uh, with a, a su subscription part of it, we can actually release stuff a bit differently. And that's also why you know, some of these features have gone on in Reason Plus earlier. Because there you don't have to ship the box of Reason 12 or say Reason 12 is done. We can actually say, well, Mimic is done, so we're going to push that out to everyone, right? Right. Uh, and that's great because we get feedback earlier too. Um, just one thing, and then we're going to get over to actually uh, work with Mimic. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's that's coming up, and I just we, we, we I want to answer so we're not ignoring people. Um, yeah. Another feature request that's come from Mimic, um, which which in some ways is like a, I see it as like oh people are enjoying Mimic, they want to do more with it, they want to, and and one thing they're wanting to do is load Rex files, and um, mm. that's I think that's something you can speak to technically as to why Rex files are yeah, not I think in Mimic. The simple answer is. That would be really cool, but right now that requires us to change the, the rack extension SDK, uh, which for this release, it was, it was too much time and work to do. Uh, so we, we might look at that in the future. We're always eyeing what we can improve there, but that's the main reason. And the other reason is that in terms of like how important it is, Dr. Octorex is still probably the best way to work with Rex files there is. 
So it, it wasn't one of those things where like, oh, if we don't add Rex support, no one can use Rex files, right? They're already really good, but definitely something we, we look at, but the reason it's not there is because it required bigger changes. Coming on the, on the heels of just what we've just been talking about, I'm reminded when, you know, when I was a kid and I'd be at the, the mall or something and I'd ask my parents, can I get this? Can I get this toy? Can I get this? Whatever. <laughs> right. And they, they would go, mm, we'll think about it. Like, you know, as a kid, you're like, you're not going to think about it. That's a no. But, but in this new sort of iterative mindset, you know, when you say that's something that we're, we're going to look at, you actually mean we, we, we will think about this and, and we will, you know, right, right, right. and we'll be able to address this uh, in a way that's different than we would have in, you know, say 2013. Yeah, yeah, definitely not shutting the door on that at all. Cool. Um, well, cool. Well, listen, let's, uh, let's get down to the, the music uh, of it all. Yeah. And let's uh, start taking a look at, at Mimic. I, am, uh, I, po I popped you up on screen here now. Oh, now I'm on screen. I am, I'm not sure. I'm going to follow your lead because you are so good at this sort of stuff. <laughs> uh, and where you want to sort of pick up, you know, this is a, in some ways, this is kind of going to pick up uh, where I left off in the in the getting started tutorial. So I would say if you haven't mm. seen the getting started tutorial, um, people out there, you're not going to be lost here, but but definitely check that out as well too on our YouTube channel. And maybe you've already seen that. And if you have, right. I think we're going to kind of pick up where I left off, but we're going to, I guess what, we're going to backtrack a little bit in, uh, in sort of, there's a Venn diagram crossover a little bit of what, what we want to yeah. cover. Yeah, I, I kind of want to, I want to give a, a brief introduction to the basic concepts, but then I want to kind of, deep dive into some stuff that maybe wasn't covered in the video and, and if any questions come up I want to answer those too. Uh, but most of all I want to also try to make some, some cool music along the way uh, because that to me is the best way to, to see what a device can do. Uh, so Mimic is definitely a sampler but it's a sampler that can do things in many different ways. Uh, so I have prepared a little folder called Stuff to Sample. Very useful, right? Uh, and in stuff to sample, I've collected some various samples. And I use this to show you the basic functionality. Uh, so this is a little loop. Uh, That's that one of I your songs, made. right? Yes, one of my songs. Uh, I'll just use this to show the basic modes first, because I think understanding the modes, if, if we don't go through that in the beginning, it's going to get very confusing quickly. But the basic mode is like any sampler, uh, you know, like N19 whatever. You put it in and you play a key and depending on how high up the key is it's gonna go fast and be bright or go slow and uh, not be bright. So that's a C3 and that's up a G3 and so on. So not very fun with a loop but this is where you would uh, take you know an actual sample of say a musical instrument right. Let's take a a vibraphone sample. Boop. Because that was uh, what samplers were used for, right? Right. Uh, that's the basic uh, pitch mode. I'm going to go back to the sample. Uh, the second mode, which uh, we had heated debates on whether we should start the device in pitch mode or slice mode. Yeah, I could uh, imagine that because it's almost like slice mode is almost the more common yeah. mode. Yeah, the, the reason right? we started in pitch mode is we wanted to make sure that you could hear the entire sample at first when you hit a key. That's really it. Uh, if you want to start in slice mode every time, you can always save a patch with that. But slice mode is kind of the, the way I'll be using this the most, I think. But we automatically slice the audio up and map that to the keys. You can see the key range here. So I can play. And it starts at C1, which is good to know. Right. And this is great for, you know, playing drum beats or, or chopping up an entire song or kind of finding interesting slices. This is where I think the most fun is had. Uh, and then briefly on, on these two, I'll wait with them. So to get into kind of what you can do with Mimic, I'm going to take maybe a more fun sample. Uh, this is something that Ryan knows about me but you guys probably don't. I'm a big fan of really, really disgusting, smooth jazz. <laughs> oh, so much. When yeah, every time but... Matthias and I would have uh, meetings about Mimic while it was in development, all of his source material was Spyro Gyra. <laughs> all of it. Yep. Not, I don't no mean shame. like sometimes or a lot of the times. I mean every single 
sound he loaded in was whatever he was currently yeah. listening to by Spyro Jara. Right. So I'll, I'll play you this song that I grabbed from, uh, from Tracklip. Tracklip is really useful for this video because they have uh, uh, entire songs from real artists that uh, you can get the license from and, and it's royalty free that way. So uh, it's more okay to show you with these. I know, of course, people sample what they want, but uh, we want to be kosher about this. We also but don't want to have this little... not blocked by the time it's uh, right. done on YouTube. This is a, a little uh, uh, cheesy song. Oof. Oh, disgusting. I mean, <laughs> I want to start narrating Thanks. like uh, retirement home promotional videos or something, you know? <laughs> I know, right? At Sunny Meadows, uh, your loved one. And this, uh, this gives me a, a just to show you how to kind of navigate. So what you generally want to do when you load in an entire song is find a section that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so there's a lot of shortcuts that you can actually see on the back of Mimic here. Uh, so oh, I yeah, really let me zoom in for that. Example. We're going to yeah. zoom in here for you. Okay. Yeah, so this so, is super useful stuff. It's like the, the most important part of the manual on the back of the device. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it's like I know musicians that um, they tape on their guitar when they're doing a gig, just the first two lines of every verse. Right, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this will just, I'll use a lot of these uh, and I'll tell you when I do, but this is a really good way to, to kind of get around the sample. So for example, uh, Alt or Option click to audition or uh, you know, double click or shift double click to send the mark, set the markers. Cool. So here I can try to find, you know. Okay, I'm gonna take this part without the drums, I think. Uh, so I can drag this, but I can also double click. And I can also zoom in. To it's go, it's okay, worth saying this is I not, really this is partially based around, this is your musical taste, but also, I just want to make it uh, a point to people when you're sampling going outside of your genre is like almost the default instinct you yeah. should be having. Right. Like yeah. if you That's make where you hard find techno, stuff that just like don't sample <laughs> get techno the to make techno. <laughs> <laughs> so here, if I, if I want to find, you know, a good little chunk to play, uh, I can just start listening and, this is really good to know. If I drag this, you see it doesn't snap or anything. But if I move the arrow up here, it snaps to the nearest transient. Right. So that's, yeah, that, that's something that came up too. I know we have this button that we're going to talk about called snap to slices. And yep. uh, even my own instinct at first was to think that that was how you turned on that right. snap to slice I'll behavior. But yes. uh, so this is just the way, like, I think when you start with a sample, you want to find an interesting part. Uh, I'm going to work in slice mode because I want to play parts of this. That's just me trying some slices. Right. You can see the sensitivity is max now. You can, you can turn this down and get kind of bigger chunks. So this brings up another useful feature. Uh, play through is something that's easy to miss when you first look at this. Right, I didn't talk about this in, in the video too, so. Yeah, so here I get all these small slices, right? Great for doing like clicks and cuts and stuff. But sometimes you just wanna start somewhere and you wanna actually keep playing from there. And that's what play through is. So when you hit a key, you'll start at that slice, but it'll keep playing even beyond the slice markers, right? I like that, yeah, where is that? That's cool. Uh, but playthrough, super useful for that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, the other thing you generally want to do with a sample is not just play it like it is. You want to kind of change how it sounds, you want to affect the audio, the pitch, and so on. Uh, and that leads us to the stretch modes. Uh, where right now the stretch mode is tape. Oh. Meaning that if. if yeah. Quick, just a quick question. Um, uh, what does reset slices do? I mean, would it will it mess you up to show oh, that right. now? No, not at all. Uh, this is if I do things, so you can interact with the slices. I've just I haven't done that. I can say I want to lock this one in place. I want to add a new one over is here. It's just to say you, you clicked it one. once to lock. Clicking it to lock it in place turns it blue, and now it's right. 
Locked. Yep. Clicking to lock, double click to add new, drag to move. And you can see the blue markers. That means I've interacted with these. So if I actually bring down sensitivity, these are the only ones that would be left. So now that is locked, right? Right. Yeah. Those are important. Uh, if I don't want that, I, you know, I regretted my decision. Click reset, and we're back to where we were. Right. So it's just it's a, it's the default, like automatic transient detection. Yeah, exactly. Right? It, it resets to the analysis, uh, the thing we did when you loaded the sample. Uh, so to <laughs> talk Adam's about the uh, bearded guys are slaying it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for stretch mode. This is kind of what decides how pitch and speed works. Right. Uh, tape works kind of as the name implies, and you covered this in your video. When pitch goes down, so goes, go, does the speed. So now it's normal speed and pitch, but if I bring it down to an octave down, it's gonna be half speed. You know, and the same speed is the same, because if I move speed down, Right. That's also going to change the pitch. Can also do some cool stuff with actually uh, modulating speed in this mode, which is really fun. Uh, but we also have time stretch modes, which you covered. Uh, and these are really kind of, if I were to say what Mimic does best, uh, part of it is actually these time stretch algorithms that are adapted from the ones we use in the sequencer. So advanced is, <laughs> as you can tell by the name, the most advanced. It really takes care of all kinds of materials and, and transients and keep those intact. So even if I bring down the pitch quite a bit, I'll take some part with some drums, maybe it's even clearer that way. It still sounds pretty good. Right. Uh, it's the same deal when I bring down the pitch. I can actually start playing this slowly, but at the same speed, uh, the same pitch, sorry. The speed down and pitch the same. So slow now. Yeah. This I really like. This is one of my favorite features, just bringing the speed Cigar down to a halt. Yeah, because you can get all these like... You're not you're not penned in by you know when you've got those really short slices at normal yeah. speed you you really have just a, a quick moment like okay got to move to the next one or else my slice right will run exactly out. right if I didn't have playthrough here for example this this little slice is this yeah. short right right <laughs> but with speed at the very bottom it's infinite right that's a nice one. You see, I'm, I'm just kind of going off on tangents here because I get ideas by the sounds. But, uh, <laughs> we'll be right really back, guys. Matthias is going to go make a song and then uh... <laughs> release it, and then we'll keep going. A quick tech uh, question so, though, while we're while we're yeah. going through this: uh, Can you drag in uh, different audio file types? Um, example, M4A, um, MP3. We'll throw in there. It, it can load the file types that Reason can load natively, uh, okay. which I think is uh, OS dependent, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. MP3 works fine, for example. And and on the uh, well, so if that's true, then on the Mac side, M4A would work as well. So yes, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so that's the stretch mode here, and advanced melody and vocal are kind of riffs on the same thing. They're really good time stretching modes that are made for all around materials, melodic, i.e., someone playing a melody, a monophonic material, or vocals. So I won't cover those in great details. But there's also granular. Uh, which, if I remember correctly, you didn't really cover. No, no, you're... And I think this one is, is super cool. So granular is is really... It's it's the old way to do time stretching. Uh, modern time stretching still kind of uses grains, but this is really... It's much cruder. Uh, so it splits up the audio into a bunch of small, small, small slices, uh, just like grains, granular mode, right? And you set the length of them, so how short they are, how often they repeat. Uh, but this becomes really fun at like super slow speeds. <laughs> it's 
So what it basically says, how long is the grain and how much does the grain overlap with the previous grain? So it's kind of smearing it out a bit. Yeah. And if you use like super old time stretching plugins or something, this is generally what they use. Uh, and the but spread it's great on the sp the spread uh, is yes, at the stereo. Spread actually, yeah, it puts out the grains in in the stereo. So if I yeah, you can really hear it. Yeah, you know when you, it's funny because when you pull the length down uh, on that, actually, so it's less. Um, yeah. It's actually quicker. Um, exactly. So it's the length of the grain, right? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, yeah, so, well, maybe not that extreme. But somewhere in the middle, there was an effect that was happening where it just was sounding like a granular sound that was just super wide. Like there was almost a Haas effect going on where yeah, it felt yeah. super wide, but not like an auto pan. The yeah. more they overlap, the more you get the both, right? Chris, Chris uh, Ray knows that both. It's super stereo, yeah. Yeah, and this is great, like... This is a, a probably a horrible sample to really show the, the, how beautiful that can sound. So I'm uh, gonna take a track I made that's more of a <laughs> to a different uh, slow jazz thing. track. Oh, so this is just a, a track I did uh, a while ago. That's you know it's just a synthesizer thing. But that kind of stuff with granular. It's great, especially if you start playing low octaves here. You can get this really kind of spooky sound. Yeah, yeah, that's it's really so crazy. Sort of cinematic. You can also bring it down. Again, stretch speed zero is, is great. I'm just playing one note. Uh, so the stretch types, I'm showing them in an extreme way now. Right. But most of the time, you use those to kind of make your slices a bit longer or make, you know, a, a piece of rhythm kind of feel a bit more drawn out or a mm. bit tighter. Or that, That's really what they're for. Out of curiosity, the uh, length parameter, somebody had asked if that's automatable in granular uh, mode. Oh, in, in the granular mode? Uh, not from the front panel, uh, sadly. But I think you can access it through a combinator. Okay. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. That was uh, reason East to that ask. So they, they're well equipped to uh, combinate that. Yeah. Uh, so to show this all in action, I, I want to show a little bit of the uh, more the sound processing, right? Uh, so I'm just going to take this uh, sample also from Tracklib. That's uh, a bit of a jazz piano track. gonna have some bigger chunks there and a bit of playthrough. Oh, there's some vocals. There we go. So this has a couple of uh, like interesting slices that have some interesting harmonies and melodies, right? So this is generally how I uh, how I do it. So you, your mileage is... might vary, but I really like finding a rhythm yeah. by playing. So like finding something that isn't the rhythm of the track or, or rhythm of something else, just by something that sounds interesting. So this has a kind of nice groove. And this is the stuff I love because this is the stuff where it's like you can only get this vibe from sample juggling. There's no, yeah. you know, like there, there's other things where you can, you can sort of like, you know, ah, I, I won't go on a tangent. I love this stuff. Yeah. Uh, and what I like to do is I find, I play a pattern I like that has an interesting tempo and kind of feel. So if you take this. I kind of know what tempo this is. So I'm going to tap it in. Oh, let I me can use two hands. Okay. So you're playing that and tap tempoing at the same time? Yeah, and I could just think it's like ding, 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 yeah, yeah, right, right, and start tapping, right? DJ but Afro says this, need, this needs there. a break. Yeah, so I'm gonna add a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Perfect time, so DJ Afro. Some, this is just from the from the soundbank, but it's uh, some Bomb Squad drums I really like. 
They're just, on to you. They're, they see where you're going. Uh, yep. Mind, Mind Vegas, as producer says, now lo fi drums, which is uh, right yep. where you went. So that kind of works. Uh, so now I want to process this sound a little bit and make it sound interesting. I'm also going to pick up the volume a bit because this is a soft performance. So first I think I want to kind of lower the pitch a little bit just to make sure it, it doesn't feel exactly like someone playing the piano but more like a, a bad version of it. I'll try pull it on maybe three. That's cool. Uh, I'm probably going to record this just so I have the pattern and can work with it while listening. Okay. That's a good enough loop. You're getting a comparison to Massive quick. Attack? You know, there's, uh, there's something... I don't mind that comparison. <laughs> <laughs> there is um, there's something very, like... Not quite in our DNA, but 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 close. When we hear the sound of digital audio pitched down artificially, there's something that just feels so sort of reminiscent of of early era sampling and early kind right, of you know right. SB twelve hundreds and that sort of uh, style. So what you yeah. did there by moving that pitch down, it's not just a a sonic choice that you've made. There's almost a entire aesthetic that this takes on just from yeah you know and I'm as a listener gonna, i think i'm gonna keep working with that aesthetic a little bit cool. just to kind of bring it home i'm gonna add some dirt and stuff but one thing i want to do in the pitch section is actually modulate this slightly mm. uh, so i want the pitch to kind of warble because we're in advanced stretch mode it doesn't really change the speed it just changes the pitch so if we listen to this uh, i'll try to dial in some lfo oh here it sounds bad tape. Yeah, but cool. You don't need to have just a cycle. You can have my favorite waveform in the world, the smooth random. So you don't know where it's gonna go. So just a little bit, like six percent, just a hint right. of it. Oh, that's uh, cool. So that's one thing I think really makes a makes a difference. You can of course automate pitch with you know, something way cooler. You have CV inputs on the back, so you can do a sequence or, or anything, but I like this little bit of warble. Just a little uh, bit of that, that imperfection, you know, we, there's so much of, exactly. of what we do in these perfect tools that we try and introduce imperfection, and that's a cool one. You know, people yeah. are uh, going, going live in the comments here with like, they're sound designing this with you now. They're like, add some, some okay. effect noise and, and compress it. And, you know. Okay, good. Yeah, give me, give, me the, give me the top add comments and I'll add those. Uh, I think I'd, go into some effects, uh, some coloration, noise coloration yep. and stuff. And maybe, uh, maybe we can look at some effects. of the other stuff too. Yeah, uh, we'll start with some effects because uh, if you have something that sounds old school, kind of tapey, you want it to be quite compressed. And this is a nice recording where it isn't quite compressed. Right. So I'm going to use this compressor right here and just kind of really droop, chunk it up. So you can hear the kind of breathing almost. Yeah. Now I... And I think that's important because you hear the you hear the cuts, you hear that I'm not playing something in sequence, I'm actually changing things up. Right, that's right. That's really key to making the sample sound interesting. I, you know, I said this when I made this tutorial, and, and I stand by it every time I hear and use this compressor. I don't know what, what Peter did in his mojo magic to make this work this way, but I've never used a one knob compressor before that was always the thing I wanted it to do in that moment. You know, I, <laughs> when I compress things, I always want, I want to get the threshold and the ratio and the attack. And I want, I want mm. to get in there and, and muck with it. And yeah. this is the only one knob, you know, maybe the, I, you know, an LA two a is the, the other closest. It's not quite one knob, but it's more or less one knob. Yeah, um, pretty much. Yeah. But this is uh, it, it just does the right thing. And it, it did it here. Yep. It does it on drums. It does it on so many things. It squeezes, that's what it does. It squeezes. Uh, I, I believe I'm not lying if I say this is based, at least based on the pulverizer squash knob. Uh, and the reason for that is that we really wanted this extreme values where it just pushes up the noise and stuff. But there's something, and maybe, maybe it is based on pulverizer, but I tend to find this one uh, more, 
musical. I, I don't know. It's always hard to put a word on yeah. it, but but pulverizer. It could definitely be differences. Like I, I even if I could look at his code, I couldn't decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. But there's something about pulverizer. Yeah, pulverizer is one of those things when I really want you to hear the compression, I, I right, go for pulverizer. Right. When I but with yeah. this one, it's more like when I want the thing that compression does with the no must no fuss sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, Plus, can, is probably even more extreme, I think. Can I just zoom in uh, obscenely for a second? And when you move that squeeze, mm -hmm. I didn't notice this until later, the little dimples go up and down. <laughs> I know, right? It's a squeeze. I think squeeze that's it. slightly adorable. Okay. Uh, so we have some compression. I want to add some effects too. I, actually, I want to walk you through the effects because uh, it's a different selection than you might expect. So we wanted to add effects that really added character to a sample, not effect that made uh, the sound, you know, the, the track sound, sound finished. So you won't find any reverbs and delays and, and stuff like that. Uh, but we added a lot of noise coloration and kind of overdrive and stuff. So noise is pretty straightforward. It adds some noise. And this is what I think this loop, loop needs. So I'm going to go back to it soon. But just adding a little bit of it at the middle will sound like this. Starts hissing a little bit. When the effect mod changes the color of the noise. Uh huh. Pretty bright. I was, I was going to ask, yeah. yeah. And here it's pretty like low end, which is really nice to just get a bit of. Uh, you also have resonant noise, which is pretty extremely filtered noise. Right. We've, we've now lost, nice all, lost all vibe, but... Yeah, but this could be nice to add a bit of sparkle in the top, for example. Just a little bit of kind of harshness. Uh, so those are the noise types, and they're just useful for adding a bit of dirt. Koichi uh, says, uh, this is, this is going to need a layer of rainfall at night dot wave. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, ring mod is a ring mod, which is one of those things you generally don't think about when you think about effects, but it can really lead to some weird timbres that I think is, is really nice. You can really fine-tune this. This makes it sound super digital and weird, right? Almost right. clangy. Yeah, it's like the, your sample suddenly is going through a speaking spell or something. Yeah. It's really nice at really high levels too. Get these kind of ringing things. Mm. Uh, then there's two different lo-fi uh, things where bitrate is, is only uh, the actual sample rate. So here I'll take it on max so you can hear it, but here it's pretty much intact. And as you lower this, you lower the, the sample rate here. All the way down to... Right. I find it really nice around like 80% to add a bit of Yeah, this, I was going to say, this is this is the one where, particularly on drums and stuff like that, I'll put this on, but just like, just a dab will do you. You know, it's like yeah. cayenne pepper. You a go too far. A really great thing about it is, is adding high end, actually, because when you when you have a sample and you actually pitch it down quite a lot, yeah. uh, all the high end gets moved, right? All the high end right. in your original sample is now pitched down, so you're losing right. a bunch of high end. And if you want that back, it's really nice to have these distortion -y effects to add a bit of that sizzle at the top. Yeah. Uh, the other one called yeah, that's low something, that's also a, That's something reduces, I think people uh, don't think about. That you take, if you take a drum sample uh, and you pitch it down an octave, a tw 20 kilohertz, your highest frequency is now 10 kilohertz, like your highest, highest yeah, frequency. Yeah, right, your hi-hats exactly. that are at like 11K are now down at 6K. Like it really does all yeah, shift. Yeah, right. Uh, so, so I think that's really good. And the, the low res one is doing the same, but it also affects the bit depth. So it has uh, reduced bits and sounds really noisy. You can really hear the background noise here. It's almost like <laughs> going right, all the time. Right. I've seen people in the comments, uh, you know, reminiscing about uh, SP12s and, and ASR10s and some of those early samples. And that's, that's yeah. a way to kind of get some of the what at the yeah, time, this is definitely an homage to that, right? Yeah, to, it's a, yeah. to all those badly built. It's funny because <laughs> you know, they the were time, limited by technology. People were so bummed that they had only twelve bit yeah, yeah. sampling. <laughs> you know. And now we want to add it back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then you have two pretty bold ones here: Seinfeld and uh, Scream. All of these are super sensitive to gain, by the way. 
if you want different kind of effects, the gain staging here with the compressor and the amp gain can make a lot of difference. But Signfold is a distortion folder that quickly gets crazy. It's really nice at low levels. It's also really nice when you have low gain to kind of get a bit of that rough, 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 rough. Right. It's one of the more extreme effects, but I, I really like it. And then you have, uh, you can guess where it's from. The scream. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, is which um, is a classic overdrive effect. And and the Scream Four distortion has a, a particular algorithm called Scream, right? And so that's what this one yeah, is. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure it's exactly that because it has two parameter knobs, and this is one. So there's, mm, yeah. there's some changes being made, right? But uh, just a bit of nice overdrive. But I'm gonna stick to noise. Yeah, for, for this, this particular sample, this is that is the right. Yep. Uh, and then you have, I think, the most important thing when working with samplers is the low cut, high cut, because you have this song often that has all the frequencies and they're everywhere, right? And uh, if you start adding bass and lead to that and hi hat, it's just gonna eat up all the frequencies. So I really like cutting away some of the low end and even some of the high end uh, to make it kind of more uh, limited. And that also makes it sound older in a way. Now it sounds like, yeah, that was from not the best recording, right? There's a wonderful story. Also, uh, Hank hmm? Shockley from the Bomb Squad told us a wonderful story when I interviewed him about um, he had a, a loose jack in his sampler well, when he was working in the studio and it, it muffled the sound and he said he spent hours freaking out trying to figure out why the sound was muffled and why it was what was wrong and when he finally figured out it was the cable and he heard the full range of the sound come back he was like wait a second hang on wait go pull it out a little bit again and then went muffled again and he went yeah oh okay that was better <laughs> let's lay that one down you know so. yeah oh so someone asked if this was ma named after mimic the movie uh, it, it wasn't it was named after Mimic the monster in Dungeons and Dragons oh, <laughs> and all go. other following role-playing games. <laughs> there you go. I played too many role-playing games. Uh, the reason it's, it's kind of a shapeshifter and it's a bit of a treasure box filled with stuff. <laughs> uh, so fun fact. There you go. Anyway, uh, I want to kind of finish this sound. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do want to use the filter here. So you have the high cut, low cut, but the filter can really add character. Uh, so you have a bunch of filters, low pass, high pass, both uh, 24 dB and 12. Also notch and comb. I just show comb real quick because it can get crazy. This is like a really strange sound that can be quite nice actually. It really messes with the frequencies. Yeah. But what I want here is really just use a, a low pass filter. Uh, to, with a little bit of ref resonance to kind of squeeze the sound together, remove some high end, and particularly use the drive. So here you can see, you can hear the cut quite clearly. And with a bit of drive, you get even more color going into the compressor here. And of course, you can also modulate this. Oh, wait, wait. So you Pause it while you're talking. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, you don't have a ducker on this. So yeah. you're, you're going to modulate this. So you're going to modulate the filter, you, you're saying? You, you can. Uh, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to use a bit of the envelope, which is right here. So it kind of opens and closes as I play notes. So you can kind of, if I go... So I want just this kind of whoop, but I want it higher up. Oh, I hear it, yeah. So it just kind of it kind of opens a little bit and makes it's it a, a little textural bit more dynamic. filter rather than I mean, we we tend to think of filters as a very obvious thing. Yes, right? synthesizer thing, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I like using it like this, especially when sampling more normal music. Uh, so let's see how this actually sounds with some drums done. It's pretty good. I'm gonna I find mean, some kind of bass, or I won't be happy. Who who in the who in the audience can uh, drop some bars? Let's get this uh, let's get this going. Oh, you oh, you're going for it. You're adding bass. 
But I can only play in C, so I'm gonna pitch this up. <laughs> Something like that, just a little bit of shaky upright bass. So this is kind of a, a, of a basic way to make, you know, a classic kind of hip-hop beat. I like pulling in a sample in slice mode. I like playing stuff to find a rhythm rather than something else, because I think that's how you get a unique sound from a sample. It's so easy to drag in a sample and kind of play it as is. Right. Uh, but making it your own is a lot about right. finding what, And what did this, what was the original sample that we came from? Uh, the original sample, uh, let's actually go here and I can... Play it. <laughs> yeah, so we're a world away from that. Yeah, we're, we're quite a bit away. Now, oh, that's so good. But you know, so do you have some guidance? Because I think this is something that people that are, that are getting into this might wonder. I already said, like, go outside of your genre to look for samples. Look for the weird stuff, mm. because that's where you're gonna be able to pull that into your genre and, and make it your own. But how do you see, is there a, do you, is this something you learn over time that you can see the potential in a sample? Because like, I don't know if I would have heard that classical piano yeah, and been like, yeah. that is a hip hop lo-fi banger waiting to happen, you know? I honestly don't, I honestly don't think you learned that. I, probably some people do. I mean, there are some amazing beat makers that, that their expertise is hearing what would make awesome. So, samples, so maybe right? if anyone in the, that is more of a, a sample expert um, or, or uses this in their music all the time, throw it into the comments. Let us know. Do, is yeah. that a skill that you develop over time that you can sort of see the, the gem in amidst mm. the rough? I think I'll, I'll give a bit of an example of how I tend to try. So I really like just doing mimic slice mode and then, you know, taking various songs and putting them here and then just playing. And if I don't get something out of it right away, I'll actually load up something else, right? And I often thought like, okay, probably some lower sensitivity. There's something there, but I'll try something else here. There's just a track. With a the comment that had uh, come up uh, before someone had asked about, and I'm seeing it here, we can talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a limit to the number of slices? Uh, yes and no, and yes again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you see here is that, oh, look, all this, this orange field is just full of slices. Uh, what this means is that this is how many keys a keyboard can have. You, you can't play beyond this. Uh, so we won't show you all of these other slices that you can't play anyway. But once you bring down the sensitivity, these are all mapped out to the keyboard. So that's kind of how you see only the orange ones. Uh, but you can actually see all the slices here. Uh, and I think there is a theoretical limit once you start getting up to like, I can't remember the numbers now, but you know, seven, eight minutes of music that's super transient heavy. Uh, eventually we're gonna not find anything but if you just you know chop that down or move the move the markers it's gonna be okay gotcha uh some Hope advice coming sense. in um just to, I'll, I'll share on the stream um in terms of finding source material they say uh, la winter says it's mostly about experimenting and finding something that feels good or unexpected so maybe that's what you're yeah totally you're listening for um uh, yeah. Raphael says it's just trial and error well, that's I guess that's exactly. good to hear. You know, it makes me feel like I'm yeah. not behind the Yeah, curve. it makes me feel like I didn't miss anything either. <laughs> uh, so I, I love doing that. So th this is what I did. I, I took a bunch of tracks from Tracklib and put them in this folder for this stream, and I haven't really listened to them. So I, I tend to just pull them in and go... 
Okay, this is some kind of Rhodes performance. So when I find something like that, when I just try a rhythm, so I go pa 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 pa. Like if that triggers something, which it did here. Then I start kind of expanding that rhythm idea. I go like, what if I add a note in between? Yeah. What right? if people and can once see? I get do that one again. Of those. I'm just gonna zoom in so people actually see the slices jumping around there. Because what you're doing is yeah. you're you're really playing with the sampler in that you're sometimes you're triggering slices so fast that it's your note choices right, exactly. and sometimes you're letting it play to actually so you can see this first slice is quite long yeah but i'm re-triggering that super quickly <laughs> that was cool yeah Stevie Wonder remix. Uh, uh, and this is pretty much what I do. But another thing that I, I think everyone should try, that I want to try uh, making an example with here, is taking your own songs. Sometimes you've made a song that you really like. Yeah. And there were parts of that you, you loved and some that were okay. And maybe it was years ago. So I have this song uh, that I've just taken a chunk from that I made for the Soul School refill, like way, way, way back, the, almost when I started. It sounds like this. I remember this one. Right? And that one is like, a, well, I don't know what that could give me, but it clearly has some cool chops, right? <laughs> so let's try finding something. Let's make it a bit less sensitive here. So, like this one is really nice. This wee, pretty cool too. And that could be a track, right? So I'll, yeah. I'll remove this amazing hip hop track. Sorry, beat. <laughs> so I kind of use this as a as a basis. Um, and I guess that's roughly this tempo. Ah, uh, 120, sure. <laughs> So one thing you really want to avoid when using entire tracks is getting all the drums. So this has big old kicks in it. Right. Yeah. And you, you don't want to have that if you're going to add your own kick. So a bit of low cut goes a long way. Uh, yeah. And then, I mean, it's as simple as trying a drum loop and then playing to it and see if that fits, right? Any kind of rust. Uh, and if you want to, you know, change the speed a little bit, if you think it moves too fast, again, just go to advanced and kind of try to pull it down a little bit. And if you don't want it to be like the length I'm pressing, you can of course use the, the envelope here. Everybody is uh, likening you to Daft Punk. In fact, yeah, um, that, this is a typical like French house kind of thing, right? Right. Which is funny because it's I, you all know, about the filter. This is a this is a like do as I say, not as I do thing. Where I when I said go outside of your genre, don't look for you know don't look for disco samples to make a disco song. The exception of the rule being. <laughs> 
French, <laughs> right. you know, house disco stuff. Like they sampled old disco to make new disco. Yeah. And, it's uh, okay to resample stuff in the same genre. I think that works. Yeah, it, but I it, think it you is. Find it the is. most interesting results if you don't, right? Exactly. So. That's that's sort of my, my point. <laughs> your master output just a touch oh yeah absolutely Sorry. just a touch uh, i am killing people's ears no you, i just see you redlining i don't know you know if it's killing ears or anything but better sure so that's an example of kind of if you use your own tracks you'll find that you actually know the tracks pretty well too so you know that you know i have these big chords that i did in this track those are right. pretty nice to reuse and i think that's that's a great way to do it. Uh, so those are just some examples of kind of s sampling in action. I do want to mention the multi-slot, the multi-pitch modes, uh, just especially multi-pitch, which we haven't talked about before. But before that, is there any burning questions we should answer? Yeah, um, I, I've been kind of picking them up as they come in. Um, there's a, as always, there's a whole, you know, the chat is its own live stream of conversation. Um, <laughs> but definitely throw... Uh, throw questions out there. Uh, Chris Ray, quick on the uptake, noticed that I switched. We're in the second hour now of our live stream, so I'm, I've am i moved to Green Mug, from Yellow Mug to Green Mug. Um, hopefully the audience can handle that. I know that they grow quite attached to Yellow Mug. Um, yep. But, yeah, if you have any other questions, um, let's throw them out there uh, and, and talk about them. We, um, well, I, I get about one that I'd maybe, I don't know if this is the right sample or place to talk about it, but something that... Uh, because it tripped me up initially, I'm going to mm. uh, assume that there's, there's others out there that might want to understand it. Start position, global position, snap to slices, ah, great, great, all great, that great. stuff. I had that in my notes, but I, I'm just not looking at my notes. <laughs> so uh, let's drag in a sample again. Let's see what we can have. What's this? You know it, more smooth jazz. Is this like on a weekend? Are you like listening to stuff? I mean, not this library music stuff. Oh, I, I have a, a relatively extensive vinyl collection with Spyrogyra and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, world. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, so this, this can trip you up, the, the start position, uh, because you might think that it's, uh, it's something other than this. So this is mainly for, uh, not for moving the start position yourself, which always snaps to transient when you uh, hold it up here. Uh, it's for modulating start position. Uh, so for example, if I start playing this track, start playing at the beginning, right? Uh, by using this modulation here, I can make it start wherever I want. So I'll just use random as an example. So every time I hit a key, You've now, you, using the LFO, you have changed, even though you've specified the start position, you're overriding that start position. Yeah, yeah, I'm choosing a random value here in the waveform that it, it kind of triggers instead. Uh, and random is just every time you hit a key, you get a random value. I like using it because, you know, you never know what to get. Of course, you can also use CV or the LFO or even an envelope or even how hard you press, right? Trying to play the same strength here. Kind of around here. I'm gonna play hard. I'm over here. Right. Uh, but that's a really fun, useful thing. Uh, right now, it's just going anywhere in the waveform. If you click snap to slice us, it only goes to a transient slice. Okay, so it's still random, but it's gonna jump to the nearest yep. slice. It's gonna snap to the nearest slice. So you hear you often get an attack, right? A drum hit or a, a, right. a string or an, chunk. A, yeah, just a note, and yeah. Uh, and an interesting way to kind of show this is like if I have an LFO here, it's gonna do an upwards LFO. What? You see it moves over and over again, just upwards. Sounds like me when I used to listen to my parents' vinyl, you know, and I just- <laughs> I know, right? Finding the right place. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, if I don't have global position off here, then every everything I start will start uh, at a place dictated by an LFO, right? So I start at very different points. 
and chaos can ensue. Wait, so wait, I'm... If you have... Okay, I'll, I'll try to explain that yeah, a bit simpler. I, I got confused too. <laughs> uh, if, if I play several keys, so this is polyphonic, right? Ah. If I play several keys, they will not start where the because other key is. Because it's starting start... randomly through... Yeah, or, it will start the where, the, where the LFO currently happens to be, right? Because if I hold down one key, it just starts playing there. The LFO is still running, but it's not changing because I'm not starting it again. Right. So if I do that with several keys, I'm going to play some octaves here. Uh, they'll just start at different places. I see. And it's chaos, right? Chaos, with yeah. global position, they will always start at where the playhead currently is. So every voice I'm playing... I'm not going to do this in tape mode because then you don't hear the differences, but let's do advanced. Now I'm adding an octave above, right? And below. I'm playing three notes. But they're playing at the same position, all of them. Does I see. Sense? They're staying synced, basically. Yeah, they're staying where the playhead is. One. Yep, got it. Uh, so that's what global position is. And it's really useful when modulating this because it won't be all that chaotic, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, one thing I really like to do with this is doing really short... Short little clicks uh, and have random pretty high, so it just you know jumps around. It jumps up, jumps up, and gets down, <laughs> and then add something like a player here. And I'm just gonna hold the 16th note. Now it's just jumping around in my song randomly, right? And this is pretty fun for doing like micro uh, uh, kind of clicks and cuts music. Yeah, it's sort of, a, it, it, it's forming a weird pulsing bass, uh, not, ba not bass yeah. line, but like a, the basis for a... For and the really funny thing is then just, just, you know, you have this set up and then you drag in another sample and see what happens. Here's a, another track that I did a long time ago. <laughs> Just, just from your modular amb amb Ambient synth noodling, yeah. If I pull in that instead, I of course get a completely different result uh, from, from jumping around. I don't even have to snap the slices. Ooh. Right, and this is... Now we're talking. This is something you can do. Uh, so you can do a lot of that kind of, uh, you know, Ah, I had notes here. Uh, you can do a lot of that kind of fun micro music. It doesn't take much to make this interesting. And it's kind of already pretty cool. Yeah. And then maybe add a bit of effects. Twenty-first century Donna Summer, right? <laughs> Maybe add a little bit of bitrate reduction. Ooh, and that's a pretty cool idea. So, yeah. So that's uh, just to explain the start position. It, it's a really weird example, but I think it showcases uh, how far you can go with that one. Is this maybe? So I hope is, that answered the question. Is it worth, um, since this is because this is cool now? Um, I, I'm wanting to put a little effect on it or something like via maybe mm -hmm. the sends. Is it worth talking about the the sends? And oh there? yeah, sure, sure. I mean, uh, if you're working. Uh, I mean, especially if you work in the in the rack plugin. But uh, if you don't want, if you want your stuff in the rack and not use the mixer, that you want to build it into a combinator uh, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You have sends here, and these sends are actually sending out uh, here at the backside. Effects send out. So if I want to add a bit of reverb, then um, now this is important for people that don't know. If you drag something into the rack and hold Shift, it will not connect to anything. 
So it's completely unconnected. It's really good to know because yeah. sometimes you just want to add something and wire it up yourself. Uh, I'm going to add a little mix channel too. So I'll take effects send out one into the audio input and the output into another mix channel. So now I can send my sound here. I'm going to mute the drums for now. We need to play it. Now I can send that to the reverb. Gotcha. It's traditional sort of send type stuff. Yeah, Tr but traditional send. And you can, it's mostly because we, like we wanted to limit the effects for kind of sound shaping stuff. Right. But we know people like in their combinators or, or something like that want to add the effects they want. So this was just a way to... A, I think this is nice, a... nice, neat way to do this. It's a nice design choice because, you know, the, the, the tough thing that you guys do on the design side of things is like... You, you, of course, you could have put a delay, an onboard delay, an onboard reverb, a chorus. So, you know, you could throw all that stuff on there, but but yeah. you want to focus the effects that are on Mimic towards the stuff that kind of goes to the, the stuff that's there, the the compression, the coloration, the the shelving, yeah, the, yeah. the stuff that really goes to I, I sample think that's, specifics. Uh, that's one of the most important things when designing something. And uh, here, I'm not trying to toot our horn, saying we do everything right, but giving an instrument or anything like its its character and its uh, kind of uniqueness and its strengths is often about what you avoid putting there yeah uh, like i'm i'm personally not a firm believer on of a, like an instrument that does everything right right oh here is the the synthesizer with with every imaginable thing you could ever do with a synth those are really cool they're technical feats to be sure but they're often quite tricky to use yeah they're like they're filled with so many options that you can sometimes get like almost writer's block from opening it i always think uh, about we try to it? err on the side of of more like a device that that feels like a cohesive thing there's a there's an episode of the simpsons where they let homer design a car yes yeah. the homer <laughs> the homer exactly. is that what it's called <laughs> It's, yeah, the Homer. It's hey, very easy for, for it to become the Homer. I see you've cleared out Mimic, and, and maybe you're moving on somewhere else. But before you do, uh, there were some people that were asking, is it possible, can, do you have an undo history that you can jump back to where we were? Uh, probably. Okay. Let's find out. Uh, okay, right. cool. Uh, there were some people who were curious if the, the cool thing you're doing there with um, Dual Arpeggio, if it would mm -hmm. work with Beatmap to do that as well, or what happens if, if you put uh, yeah, sure. Beatmap in there. Uh, so beatmap is is mapped to notes, so it's going to play different notes. I'm so, going to set these all to C1, just so I trigger the same note. Uh, okay. I'm going to change that later, but just just for now, like image and heap sang. So now I'm getting. Now it's just triggering with beat map instead. And I yep. can set these to different notes if I want, of course. Uh, another C, maybe a G. Right. So different, different uh, vibe. So, but... so that works. The, the, the thing that happens here that's good to know is that uh, uh, beat map is sending really short triggers. It's made for drums. Right. Uh, so that means that you're getting like the note is held for an extremely short amount of time. So if I only have sustain in here, you can hear. Right, so that's the, the length of the MIDI note. Yeah. And so you're you're using the amp envelope releases and delay, or decay, excuse me, to yeah. kind of draw out more of the note. Exactly. So what happens here if I have global position? If you remember, global position says uh, if the, the red position is running and another note comes in, it will play at that position. And when the release is up, that means you know the release is happening so the sample is playing, so the thing is moving. So every new note that comes in will not come in randomly. See? Oh, it I see. Move. Oh, it's moving through the sample more. I gotcha. Right. So this is when you turn off global position so that every note triggers something. I see. Interesting. So that became a good in-action thing of where you want it and where you don't want it. <laughs> right, right. Um, a question uh, Jojo Momo asks about CPU usage, and maybe you could kind of tell people in terms of 
uh, different stretch modes have different CPU demands, and, and you mm, were saying mm, as well that right. uh, there's some efficiencies that are coming in September yeah, 1 good, as well. So. Good that this came up. Uh, short story, uh, all the stretch modes, the higher up you play, the higher the octave, the more you pitch the sample, the more demanding it is. So if you bring in a sample that's you know, a low C, a C1 or something, and you play it up at C7 or C8, that's going to be immensely hard. <laughs> it's really going to take a lot to make that sound fantastic. Uh, we've done some improvements for the September 1st release already, both to the algorithm itself. So it's, uh, I'm trying to quote here, he might beat me down, but he said it was you know, roughly twice as effective now. As Pele uh, telling you, or DSP guy? Yeah, it's going to take, take half the have the power to do the same thing and we're also we, we didn't this is us underestimating you users we didn't limit how high you could pitch uh, so you could pitch samples so so high up that you literally could not hear them all frequencies were beyond human hearing <laughs> that took so much cpu and some people just put you know random to pitch max level dolphin and, step and, is the know, new uh, anyway it was the new genre yeah. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna limit that to uh, I think four octaves, uh, which is, is more than you need, but uh, that will help a lot with CPU usage. But already with the version that's out, uh, if you kind of don't pitch up sounds like so much in advanced stretch mode specifically, it, it's gonna be pretty nice on the CPU. Cool. Good to know. There Hope you go, Jojo sense. Mama. So, okay, so now I, did I interrupt you? And, uh, I see out? this question coming up again, sorry. So I'm just going to say, are you adding uh, uh, pitch detection? And I said that in the beginning of the stream. But yes, we're also adding root node pitch detection exactly like it works in grain, where it shows you the analyzed one and the set one, and you can set it from the position. Cool, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Briggs is saying that uh, his dog needs music too, so I guess that's where that, uh, <laughs> that's where that use case sorry. comes from. No more dog music. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, Ivan is checking in here. He's at, he's at work, just checking in to see how everyone's doing. Ivan, blow off work. Just hang out with us. Who, who needs a paycheck? No, that's bad, terrible advice. Don't do that. I'm telling you that while, while we're at work. So <laughs> yeah. I can say that. But um, uh, yeah, good to see you popping in. And, and fortunately, the stream will be on replay, Ivan. So you'll, you can catch. You'll have a chance. You'll see it all. Uh, I think I want to show two more things. Uh, it might become three, but definitely two. And I'll, I'll be I'll be relatively quick about it because we have to eat dinner at some point. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, but I'm I want to show you the two remaining modes here: the multi-slot and multi. -pitch. Oh right, of course. Jeez, I nearly uh, forgot them again. I left so it out of my tutorial. These, these first modes, they don't care about the eight slots that Mimic has. Yeah. Uh, you can put the sample here and play it in slot one. You can put another in slot two, and sure, you can switch it if you want. But they don't really do anything except select the sample. In multi-slot and multi-pitch, uh, that's quite different. Multi-slot is the most straightforward to show, because basically it takes a sample. Let's get a little kick. You can drag directly to the slot, by the way. And it maps up these samples one slot per key starting at C and then repeating. Uh, so this first Something I didn't cover in the tutorial uh, is that worth mentioning just for, this is a more convenience thing, because there's mm. eight slots um, and there's 12 notes in an octave, um, these slots repeat every octave on your controller keyboard. So it's not just C1, right. it's C1, C2, C3, all has that first exactly. slot on it. Exactly. So I'm just adding some stuff here for, for showing. Pressure's on build the biggest, uh, the best random <laughs> kit ever. No. <laughs> um, so here I just added four things. So in multi-slot, the first four keys on my keyboard now. Starting That's at not a bad kit, actually. Yep. It's great for drum machines. That's why multi-slot is here. Right. But of course you can also do one slot. Now I'd use drum samples, but let's go back to smooth jazz. <laughs> It becomes funny every time, right? Every time you hear that saxophone intro, it becomes more hilarious. And I'm just doing different things. Uh, now I'm doing the uh, United Airlines, um, yeah. you know, if uh, low if low oxygen <laughs> occurs, please put on the mask yourself before whatever. But this is a great way to find drum sounds. I just took an entire song, started zooming in, moving around the air, listening a bit. Hmm. 
Let's do something over here, maybe. That's nice. I'm gonna double click and then shift double click. So now my fifth note is. Gonna make some settings here. Right. So that's that's a way to actually, you know, make a drum machine where you also work with finding the sample. Right. Uh, this is of course where the snap to transient becomes really useful. Uh, and all and, of and these something like that, you know, separate settings. Working in the mindset of a drum machine, but with musical material like that, it's just a nice little sort of hack to make yourself work differently. You know, we we tend yeah. not to think about putting when when I think of programming a drum beat, I'm thinking about you know sort of one shot drums. But yeah, right. But this takes on a, a cool sound. That for that sure. brings up a question, by the way. Uh, just if you want to play this now, it stops as soon as I uh, let the key go. Just bring up the release, and that's the same as playing it in one shot. The reason we did it like this instead of always playing in one shot is that then you also have the option to shape with the envelope. So it's one of those things that's good to know. Yeah. So that's multi-slot, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it can be quite powerful because basically every drum gets this entire section of effects and compression, and you know. Right. I want to add some drive and. And these these settings, I, I covered this in the tutorial, but these settings are unique per slot, so you yeah. can compress one sample one way and a different right. one a different way. Now I'm really driving this kick, for example. Right. Uh, so that's super useful, and you have the stretch modes here too, right? So you can make a, a drum sound really long or or something. Uh, there's also multi-pitch mode. Yes, let's and this, dig this in. Is, uh, this is something. <laughs> <laughs> when I go into multi-pitch mode, all of my samples are playing at the same time. Which actually turned out pretty cool. <laughs> Won't lie. It was a, a pretty nice, you know, rave vibe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but here every slot has a range. So if I just want this kick, for example, in the first slot uh, on C3, just do this, and now it's only triggering there. And I can do this with any of the slots. So let's just make a faux drum machine Oops. of my bottom versions here. Kind of make. So this is sort of for hits. people that are um, more familiar with. Things, I mean, it's not the same, but but things like NNXT's key mapping and stuff. This is right. Um, so now now I've uh, I mean it's a way to kind of map out samples to play the way you want. And now I've done it in a way where uh, uh, where these drums have one key each. This fifth one doesn't. It's playing on all of them. Oh, okay. Here it's pitching up and down too. Uh, I want this to only play above the drums. So I'm going to start it here where my drums end. Here so now drums. That, you that's, you've here. basically gone back to multi-slot mode for those four. Yep. So those just use one each, while this other one... I'm also going to use advanced here. Let's see if I can play two things at the same time. <laughs> I don't know if I can. So that means I can have a pitch sound that takes up part of the keyboard. I can have some one shot, you know, at one part of the keyboard. I can even set it up so if you have some pads on your keyboard, for example, you can set up the notes corresponding to those pads, to drums, and then use the rest of the keyboard to play, you know, a melody. And of course, it doesn't need to be this. this I see. It can be something melodic. So and is that is this something that um, is would be most useful sort of in a performance context, or is this? Just a, for a sort of creative efficiency kind of thing, that you don't set up one mimic to do the pitched part and one mimic in multi-slot mode to do the drums. I mean, to, to be perfectly honest, it's, it's because it's fun. <laughs> it's really, it's fun to kind of create these like uh, devices that play multiple things. You could do this in the combinator too. Uh, but uh, what we found is that a lot of people use these solutions to have multiple samplers uh, to do various things. 
but they played them at the same time. And Marty Slot came from that, right? To load up a bunch of samplers, did their own settings and played them like a drum kit. And multi-pitch was one of uh, Peter's great ideas and also kind of crazy ideas to just do. But couldn't you do that with pitch mode too? Oh, interesting. You know, I'm realizing now sort of a, a classic thing too is you could do, even if you're staying in the drums mindset, um, pitched mm. trap, pitched tri -hat, trap hi-hats, you know, where you yeah. put your hi-hat sample across the pitch and you can actually do the like, you know. Right, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, and and well, with, with synth toms, of course. And <laughs> this is, of course, poly polyphonic up there too. Interesting. So it, it's really nice if you want to set up some kind of performance thing, uh, which is, is, is quite fun. So also, it just leads to fun patches. I, I think one of the most common things I use it for, to be perfectly honest, uh, is just quick layering. So if I take this log drum, uh, and I know this root note is D4, so I'm going to shift click D4. Uh, and then I'm going to take slot 2 and take something else. Vibraphone, I guess. Now I just have a layered sound, right? Which is pretty okay. Yeah. And you can uh, you can try with anything you want to see. Like, is this better? I'm just taking some old samples in the sound bank. You can do this with anything, but it's a nice way to layer stuff in uh, with pitch. Now what this, uh, I think someone had asked earlier on, this, this mode doesn't do things like velocity crossfading. It's not the NNXT. Um, no, no, right. it's not like that. It's really, it's really just the keys. Uh, and then, you know, the settings per, per slot uh, are, of course, really powerful. But it's not about making great multi-sampled instruments. It's more right. like, I want to try a cool thing and I want to use this stretch to really kind of speed it down. It's, it's almost, in a way, velocity crossfading is often not about layering sounds, it's about avoiding layering sounds where you, you've got right. <laughs> the quiet saxophone and then it switches to mm, the, mm. the loud saxophone, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, that's really, like, we really wanted Mimic to not be about multi-sample. That was a goal, even. We think there are great products that do that super well mm. uh, that anyone can access. So we didn't even want to try. Right. But I think one of the cool things is that you can, you make weird patches with this, especially using, like, the stretch here. I have advanced... Let's do melody instead. Pull the speed down like almost to non existent. You get these artifacts that are quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, oh, thank Let's you. I was going to tell you to put a big reverb on it. Some of the best things with stretch modes is abusing them for what they're not meant to do. So, like, this stretch mode looks for vocals, so it doesn't care as much about transients, yeah. like, the, because they don't really show up in the vocal that much. So you can get informant shifting. And granular, like we talked about before, can really... I love the stuff. Maybe you make and some I, cool patches. It's a, it, and it's such a, you know, when you when you go into this in like the way that you kind of have now, where you don't necessarily have a goal in mind, you just kind of let the experimentation take you. I think you can find mm. so many cool things. I mean, you've got just in the last three settings you did, it's like you could have done different ideas with all of those. You know, mm. really, yeah. Really. And I, I think like that's we really try to both design work, but also encourage people to, to try things and to kind of muck about. We try to keep things relatively on the, you know, all the stuff that you can try easily on the front panel so you can just reach in and go, whoop, 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 I wonder what this right. is. Because I think that's how you both learn, but also get cool, unique sounds that are like uniquely yours, that sound mm. like you. Uh, it, it's a, 
it's a it's a way of working that I think is super powerful, and it's a it's a bit lofty and kind of uh, almost ideological to talk about that stuff. But I I think uh, but it is it's any something tool that makes you think differently is is really exciting to me. It's something that I experienced personally as I was coming up and learning, and I see it when I interact with the the community and and reason users who are kind of on the newer end of the learning curve. You spend so much of your early time in pursuit of a sound that you want to attain. And mm. then it's like, it's kind of a weird thing to let go of that in your creative process and be like, I don't need to actually have a pursuit of a sound I want. I can actually, now now that I feel comfortable enough to, I know these tools and I can, I, and I, mm. I can mm. find my way around the reason rack, now I don't have to be like chasing an end destination because often what you've, and almost the struggle of the beginner is that like, what you don't learn until later is that it's like the journey is the goal. Like you, you find way cooler sounds on your right. way to the thing you think you want to make. And if you're just going mm. after the thing you think you want to make, you'll miss all that, you know, and yeah. you'll probably be frustrated. But let's, let's just be clear. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with any kind of shortcut, any pre-made patch. I mean, mm. I use loops in every single song example I did here. Absolutely. And I encourage that. And I, I think part of the, of the great thing uh, about these kinds of devices is, getting pre-made stuff. I mean, Mimic is, is a bit different because you supply your own material, but getting pre-made patches is the best way to learn because then you can go in and go, what if I turn this? Right. Oh, it, st it stopped sounding WAP and it sounds K. And that's cool, I guess, or not, right? Right. You, you start learning by altering patches that others have made. And I think like when we launched uh, the packs with Reason Plus, one of the most important things for us was to not be you know, a prepackaged sample service where things were served up ready for you and, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, there's still great starting points and you can use them as they are, but we make sure that they're in combinators using devices that you have access to so that you can open it, see how they were made, tweak the stuff, change it a little, change that Scream 4 to your favorite VST plugin or, or whatever, right? Right. I, I think it's like a... It, Straightforward on the top level, but customizable below that. I think that's really, that's a good balance. And I, I hope people uh, try working that way too. Grab Absolutely. something you like and then try to dive in. And boop, 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 boop. Speaking of sample material, um, it, it's worth saying again, I, I mentioned this in my tutorial, but uh, people that are Reason Plus subscribers um, and are looking for sample material, oh, you yeah. are grabbing stuff off of Tracklib. I've grabbed stuff off of Splice and Loop Cloud. I've sampled my own stuff, but... Um, there is a, in the sound packs, there is a whole other uh, yeah. I can, I can show you real quick just, a, just a, an example. Because uh, I, I did, the first thing I did when Mimic, the first beta, was, was here, is I grabbed a bunch of sound packs from Reason Plus and used the, the preview song. <laughs> so uh, basically, I, I went into my packs folder. Now we just have a couple here. This is my uh, non work computer. Uh, so this is a pack for algorithm that had a bunch of 80 synth patches that were great. But the actual example here. It's also a great demo song. Yeah. And that demo song is also downloaded, which means, of course, we can just pull that in, go into slice mode and see. There we go. And then you start doing all the stuff we have already talked about, right? What happens if I speed it down? Yeah. Now I can get these really long chords. And then if I add a bit of a filter, some uh, panning modulation, remove some of the low end, maybe some noise. <laughs> Somebody did mention that this is sort of makes, I think they use the phrase easy sound design. And I think it is true yeah. that it, it does make sound design kind of a, um, a very easy, fun process of just, you know. Definitely. Mucking and I out. think this kind of stuff, it, it makes you make you look at the audio differently, right? 
<laughs> like this is a track waiting to happen, so we might as well take four seconds to do that. <laughs> so far, I like you, Matthias. You've committed. Okay, I'm gonna have to get the click up a little bit. Didn't hear what I was doing. Mm hmm. Right, so straightforward. Yep. Maybe a little bit of compression and some more drive in the filter. I'll take my CT drum loops. And we'll add some side chain pump. I'm gonna use the pump back extension, which I really love. Oh, hey. And then you probably just need to add some bass to that. And you're cooking with gas. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put in a request song. now for a, uh, a regular live stream where Matthias just makes tracks and we just watch them. <laughs> All right, uh, and another pump. You get you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. But that's uh, that's really what I like about just grabbing material from wherever you can. And the sound packs, is, there's hundreds of them, each with different audio examples. Right, them. and not really, just not just two track demos like that. You know, full full mix demos. Um, even grabbing some of the the patch demo sort of singular source. You know, just yeah, a, yeah. a bass line or just a, a lead line or stuff. You know, there's a lot in right. there. So so for people that are Reason Plus subscribers, like that's stop number yeah. one on the on the hunt for sample material for sure definitely and here's another quick shout out before we get off this topic is that uh, we're running a remix competition right now uh, with uh, simon payron and uh, if you're running a remix competition you get stems and if you get stems you mm. get stuff that you can sample and make a remix out of so i tried this just before and like it t turned out these were some really good some really good like uh, piano chunks that I quite liked. So if you want to remix, I'm giving you some uh, some tips here now. <laughs> Let's do advanced. And... So like that's that's the start for a remix, right? Yeah. That's pretty much what you need. Maybe some kind of effect. I'm gonna steal the Mike Snow trick and do a do a slapback to him. This is a uh, a la Mike Snow Animals, right? That's the track. Yep, yep. Just blatantly stealing it. And you just go. And you're right. off cooking. Matthias I has think that's entered the Simon Perron remix try. contest. You're gonna you submit that. <laughs> I won't enter. <laughs> Maybe you'll win. Maybe you'll win. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it is. Uh, I've, I've, as always, I have selfishly held on to you for as long as I possibly can, because, because I like you, Matthias, and and I think everyone else does too. And it's so fun to watch you work with this stuff. Um, you make it look easy. It is easy if you if you play with it the way you do. Um, but I, I hopefully you've helped people, encourage people to to get in there and play with this stuff and see what they can do with their own samples. Is yeah. there anything? If there's, if there's one tip I really have to everyone is, if there's one thing that's really fun and easy to try is just load up Mimic, put it in slice mode, and drop in whatever you can get your dirty hands on and yeah. try playing a rhythm. Yeah. Don't try to play the rhythm in the song. Try playing a different rhythm. That's right. really that's where some of the best stuff happen, I think. Somebody that's did comment uh, a while back. They said Mimic is going to become a copyright nightmare, and they meant for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you just yep. want to drop stuff in. Um, but I yeah. mean, only sample stuff you're allowed to sample. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, or or be prepared to pay the license. I mean, that's <laughs> there. There were people that sampled stuff way back. I mean, this is actually a thing. Um, is Khalil DJ Khalil started making his own sort of songs that he would then sample, and the reason he did it was because mm. he some of his early work sampled other records and then he put it out and it did really well and then he got his royalty checks he's like where hey where's my where's my money and they were yeah. like oh yeah it all went to sample licenses he was like oh okay <laughs> so it's uh that is the reality but you know if you're prepared to pay for it you sample whatever you want <laughs> but um now listen i'm going to uh I'm, I'm gonna ask you something that i am pretty sure you're gonna say no to and i think that's okay and i support it but everybody has asked and so I'm just going to throw it mm -hmm. out there with the full, full comfort of you being like, nah, we'll do that later. Some people have asked to see just like a sneak peek of the Combinator. Hmm. Is that a, just, just a little sneak peek. Yeah. Should we? Uh, yeah. You're, you're more receptive. I was waiting for you to shut this right down. And then I was just going to look like the nice guy to have asked. It's so close. <laughs> it's so close. I can taste it. Uh, I think the main problem with that is that I'm on my personal computer. Where oh, I don't and have you don't have the build. Beta builds. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, oh. But I know from some trusted sources that if you're in the current beta of Reason 12, some things are showing up very, very, very soon, today oh. or even tomorrow. Uh, and Ryan, maybe if you have an image of that thing you did, you, it's okay. I wonder, if I, can, I wonder if I can show that. Let me see. Um, okay, let me let me try, guys. Yeah, this is improv. We didn't plan. We to did show not you plan anything. on this. Let me see here. Oh, I can, first I gotta find that image. Um, I might have to have uh, you send it back can... to me. Oh wait, is it this one? No. What did I do with it? Oh geez. Now you're just gonna watch. I could could maybe beat you to it. Yeah, maybe Let's you see. could be. Yeah, no. I, do you have an easy way to? Because I'm sharing your screen already. So yeah, I'll, yeah. while you look for it, I'll tell I'm people. Tight. So I this weekend started playing with the Combinator and uh, making my own custom combinator skin just to kind of understand the process and see kind of how it works. And I, you know, I have a background in designing, you know, Photoshop and, and doing all that stuff. So I really kind of had fun with it from a graphic design standpoint. And what I decided I wanted to do with the new combinator was make a pedal board because so many times I use Reason as an effect, like an effects pedal board for guitar effects and stuff. And so I thought, Why don't, what if I designed a combinator skin that looked like a pedal board? You know, and, and was quite reminiscent of, quite reminiscent of sort of like the boss quite. stomp pedals um, that, that are made. And so, uh, so that's what I did. And so I, I took some of the, the knobs that are now um, available as sort of the palette of knobs that are in the Combinator. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think just by showing you this, uh, we won't say exactly what will be in the Combinator update, but you'll have a lot to, to guess from. Okay, do yeah, so you that. want to do that? When you, is, your, is it up on your... Oh, no, it's not on your screen yet. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I'm sharing another screen, so hang on. Okay. So here's a sneak preview of Ryan trying uh, the updated combinator for the first time. Updated, build an updated combinator, custom, uh, custom backdrop. Let's see here. Okay, well, hang on. I'm going to switch over to that. There you go. So that is, you can see at the top, you know, it's got the the file browser and the bypass switch and all that kind of stuff. But then what you see below that is uh, things that I've built. Now, I, I think that you probably just got, I didn't send you the actual combi patch, did I? So you can't move uh, those. I can't open it anyway. You, oh, that's right. You couldn't. Because <laughs> I don't have the right build. Yeah. That's how we got there. But those, you know, those knobs that are on those uh, uh, pedals, you know, the drive knob and the tone knob on the overdrive or the, the settings there on the course, those red uh, faders, that, that's all stuff within the combinator that's movable and interactable. So, yep. That's been programmed to, to do the things they say. To do the things they, they should do, yeah. So yep. there you go. That is so not your sneaky, grandma's sneaky combinator. <laughs> yep. You, you can do a lot of cool things, and I, you have a lot to look forward to here, I think. Uh, it, it's really exciting. We're just fighting hard to make it as good as it can be for you. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, that I'm is. Uh, stop sharing this now. Yeah, there you go. Okay. That, that's, 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 a, that's probably a good tease, you know, of. Uh, yep. And I think that's the thing is, is that's that's me having just fun with backdrop design. And I think people are going to have a lot of fun with with backdrop design for sure. Yeah. So. Um, all right, Matthias, you uh, yep. you granted them their wish. I was expecting you to shut it down and you let us go there. It's you're you are a hero to the live stream. Sometimes I have to be nice, too. <laughs>
Well, you know what I thought you were going to say is we're so close to it coming out. You say, ah, just wait, it's ten days, you know, twelve days, whatever it is, uh, you'll have it. So, um, cool. Well, that that was fun. Listen, I'm gonna uh, normally play us out with music. I was gonna play the opening music, but I, I have one more request. That uh, smooth jazz might need to be our outro music today. Is that <laughs> can you cue that up and we'll go? Are you with sure? It? I I think so. I think I owe it to myself and to the audience to go out with that music. Um, <laughs> but uh, but since you're supplying the music on your end, I'm going to have you kind of just pull the, the volume down a little bit too as well so that it... Uh, um, yep. So it ducks uh, under my voice. I'll bring it into the sequencer and I'll bring down the volume. Perfect. All right. <laughs> um, I don't know how long that is, so I won't be able to time it. If it, if it ends, just start oh. it again because you can't yep. get enough of that. So here we go. Perfect. But, oh... Oh, <laughs> let's just let's just sit in this for a little bit. Oh, it feels so good. I want to talk like Barry White. Oh, baby. Uh, so listen, Matthias, I want to thank you. I'm going to pop you off screen now. I'm coming back to with me and I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. I want to thank to those of you who stuck around for the full almost two hours. You guys are champs. You're dedicated to learning about Mimic and I love you for it. And I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned some stuff. I hope you got inspired. I hope you saw that like Mimic is about like accomplishing really cool, obvious sample things. And then it's about experimenting and really kind of finding songs that you didn't even know were would come out of you from these samples. And that is, I think, where Mimic has gotten the most exciting for me. And I can't wait for those of you that are going to be getting it on September 1st. If you're a Reason Plus subscriber, you got Mimic already. You just, if you haven't already, just launch uh, you, the, your latest version of uh, Reason and it's going to be an update prompt for you there and you'll have Mimic in the latest build of Reason Plus uh, that, you, that you have so just go for it and if you are waiting for the upgrade on September 1st hopefully you're now waiting with a little extra anticipation so thanks so much guys we will be back with more live streams uh, I don't know when but we'll be back with them we'll make announcements and stuff and there's talk I will. I don't want to over promise there's talk of bringing back a regular live stream like we were doing uh, just about I don't know, six, seven months ago or something so uh, might be I don't know what we'll call that season two of the uh, Reason live streams those might be coming back uh, those those talks are being had right now in terms of uh, whether I whether I can balance it with everything else I'm doing but I'd like to do it I'm sure you guys would like to do it as well so hopefully we'll be seeing you soon on the regular and come back for our next live stream I'll bring Matthias back we'll talk about the Combinator we'll have some fun until then make great music I'll see you guys later